Okay, so we left the last learning template demonstration build. I realized there was a couple things that I wanted to add to it. First was, uh, I wanted to fix that lookup for the social security number. We can do that pretty easily, and we could do it this way. We could add the lookups for the other fields as well, just to make it easier for the operator when they're entering the data on a fingerprint that's not recognized. It allows us to kind of pre-populate those fields and you know automate even that process of building the fingerprints. And this one definitely wasn't working. I'm going to add a regular expression to it. To be clear, I don't really like regular expressions. I'm a pretty good programmer. I consider myself to be a pretty good programmer. It is not my favorite thing to do. In this case, what I'm going to do is try to find a format of three numbers, hyphen, two numbers, hyphen, and four numbers. And I did this in another video. We'll use the same kind of process. So I have a tool, Expresso. It's a free tool. Uh, you simply have to register it. Uh, this is how it comes up. It allows me to build uh, these different regular expressions. In this case, I'm going to delete the current one, which looks like it's trying to find month, days, or some samples they give you. Um, this allows you to build them pretty easily. I just want uh, two digits, so I'm going to have exactly two digits here, okay, which gives me this is part of the regular expression. And I'm going to put a hyphen, which I think is just a hyphen, specific character. And this is going to be a hyphen. Okay, and so. And I don't want more than one, I just want one, just once. So no repetition. So it is just a hyphen, so you can go through and look at that. And then um, I already know that the rest of them are the same. Oh, it should be three, right? Not two. Sometimes I need stuff help on the easy stuff too. Backslash D2 dash backslash D4. So there's my regular expression for this. Um, you can test it now, which is kind of cool. I go into test mode. I can see if there's any samples of social security numbers in here, and I do. I have a couple samples in here. This is just the test code that you're going to get, and I'll test it out on this one and make sure that it finds that. And it didn't, so it should have found. Oh, I have the wrong characters in here. I put friends. See, that's why I don't like regular expressions. I screw them up every time. All right, run that and it finds them. So now I can take this regular expression, copy it to the clipboard, go back to my data cap studio. At least now I know I'm not fighting the regular expression. I know that works. So into this lookup where we have, or sorry, into locate where we have this locate for populating the social security number, that's not working based on location based on word finding, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to always use word finding because we can still find that it's possible as a good way to do it. And instead of saying is field filled, I'm going to change this to say is field a regular expression. So let's go find, and instead of searching for that, I'm just going to find because where that action is by looking, clicking this button and finding where it is in this library instead of going and trying to find, I know it's under locate, but it took me years to kind of, or it's under validations, it took me years to kind of find out where the actions are. They're kind of hard to find. I can say, so is field, here it is, is pattern in field. So it's just, and you go, I just go and look them up. It says string value of regular expression. The expression can include any regular expression. So I'm just going to say, is it that field? So it's going to, and the return is going to say true if the pattern is found within the field, otherwise false. So there it is. Is the pattern in field? I'm going to add that action. Here's that pattern. We're going to check for that. There it is. And so there is the is the pattern in field. If it's not there, we're going to populate with the zone that comes with the fingerprint. If it's not a social security number, we're going to drop to the next function. This we're going to work. We're going to look for the social security number. In this case, I want to also do checking for is does it have that format, and then I want to do one more kind of check because we're going to do a, just a search for the social security number. And this may or may not work. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do a check for a social security number pattern. I'm going to remove this one right here. This is pattern. And the last thing it's going to do is just going to look for the word social security or my word find my list. I'm going to put a key list in here. Um, my list of words like social security number SSN. I'm going to look for that. And I'm just going to update the field. If it's wrong, we're going to leave it wrong. But the zone is going to be there and hopefully the snippet will be there for the operator. And they can always just create a new fingerprint. Choose the button to create a new fingerprint and be done. And I'm going to add a function to this. Move it up to the second function. I'm going to do a pattern search for this under my locate rules. I can find key list, and I can put the regular expression in there, but I'm going to find, here it is, regex find, and I'll just do the help, information on that, help on that, just to make sure 
a word or phrase in the current thing. The parameter is expected to be a regular expression. It's going to try to find that. And you can see they had a little sample here. Um, and here's where I'm saying, is it a date value? Because I'm going to the right of whatever that pattern is. But in this case, I'm going to take the value. So I'm not going anywhere on that. I'm just going to take the value if it finds that pattern. Add that to my list. I'm going to find that regular expression. Now i got to go back to Expresso and get it. Copy back to my application. There it is, I'm going to find that, and I'm just going to go update the field. And instead of going to find it, I know it's in the locate rules, but I, sometimes it's easier just to go get a function, sorry, get an action, and um, paste it there. So I'm going to update that field. At this point, I know it's a regular expression, but if it didn't find the regular expression, I'm going to drop down to this one. We're just going to start working, looking for the word social security number. It's going to find any of those. We're just going to go down the line. We could probably go right a line and look in that area put that value in there and that'll be our snippet so that'll be at least it'll guide the person's eye to that location where this social security wording was so that's kind of my strategy in that if I find a social security number use it otherwise let's go find something in an area where it'll actually use it and I might not do update field or I might after update field set the value to blank because I know it's not going to be a real social security number I'm just going to make the user go find it but uh, it's a, we'll see how it works publish that rule set we can go now and test this I'll run my batch through. It's done with profiler. I'm going to keep running. Go and look at the value. Oh, well, it used my fingerprint. So let's just go and delete those fingerprints. Just for testing purposes, go through with you know a blank fingerprint. Run it again. Let's cancel that batch. running and it did not find it so why is that so let's go look at next thing to do is look at the text to make sure that is a social security number on this page text right here so here is some here is a social security number so it should have found it so now we got to start going in the logs and make sure that that function actually ran and see what happened let's open up this log find regex find so it did not run at all so let's look for function names let's just for, look for uh, populate fill f fill ssn so that didn't run so somehow this action isn't attached to social security number let's go check that document main SSN open yeah so this one has so again this one the social security number has the generic version of this populate by zone so it didn't run the special social security one that we got remove that add that to that and I remember I think I had changed it to be full name had the wrong action name so let's go check I'm just going to check a couple of these, make sure they have the generic one on there. We would change these later, especially on account numbers. We might know kind of the layout of it and can use the regular expression. Your vocal doesn't have it. So that's the uh, that's the way we're going to do that. So anyway, it didn't have the right action on there, and that's why it didn't run. So I can run the same thing again and just run profiler again. It should do the regex fine this time. keep running. It's one of the nice things. I don't have to keep going right through the batch. saves a little bit of time. And there it found that regular expression. Put the value in there. And now on a document layout that's never seen before, it's going to kind of pre-populate for this operator. They're already getting some advantage out of this in the automating finding information. That's that. The next step was I had a completely different layout here that we hadn't tried. And it was PDF. is one I just went and found a form online. And I'm going to I filled it out and it's got this kind of data in it, phone number, account numbers, there's the uh, list of fake numbers and stuff. So I'm going to read and run this one through and get the list of beneficiaries. Now this is going to have some big spaces in it. It's going to be interesting that we may have to expand out our 
word finding and things like that. But the zone itself will work. I may have to remove spaces from some of these numbers as well. But I'm going to take this document, this PDF, I'm going to copy that and we'll put it in images folder. And this one's going to go in the multi-format folder because by default that has some capability of doing the conversion from PDF. Because we've converted it from PDF to TIFF so we can do the OCR on it. If it has a text layer, we can do that as well. Also, uh, make sure you don't have this open in a PDF viewer. Adobe PDF viewer, Acrobat reader, locks a file. Datacap will not be able to open the file. It'll cause all kinds of trouble. And you'll be confused like, why isn't it working? So that's one there. I'm going to cancel this batch and just run one through this multi-format new and I go choose the task ID for multi-format run that there it is this one's a two pager the system this system's already defined to be able to put these in the main page and trailing pages which it should do if not we may have to do some more tweaking hopefully not okay um, keep that running just to see what happened so it did do main page trailing page and it found the word irrevocable near SSN. So that's interesting. It didn't find the social security number correctly. Um, there's none on here because if we go and look at the text, there's going to be big spaces in between it. So we might be able to change our regular expression to allow some spaces in there. Uh, that'd be an interesting exercise. I'm not sure that we're going to do it here, but let's look at that. Why didn't it find the social security number? Because it found social, the word social somewhere. It's all just stuff you do on a normal basis to build any kind of application rid of some of these older files. So it did find the word social security, but below it this social security number 555121245, that's a social, but you can see there's spaces in there. So it didn't find it, but now my snippet is going to be in that general area, which is going to be nice. So when we do build our fingerprint, let me just show you that. Uh, I'll send this to uh, advance to verify, put it into pending, so this is as if it just went through the background processing. Run my datacap desktop. And again, this is a fingerprint that hasn't been ex seen before. We need to do that little, little pull down for this. That's pretty easy. Uh, beneficiary des. Now this one didn't get it right. I should probably do a val validate on it to make sure it has the layout of a social security number. That'd be good. Uh, but again, it didn't find it. And we know that this is not the right location. But I know that this is the social security number. So I'm going to zone that out. One, two, four, five. So there's that social right there. And it did that. And we'll put a ver validation in there to remove the spaces and to make sure it's it has, it has the format of a social security number. But this one's not going to have spaces, so we could do a double format and say it either has to be have the hyphens in it or it has to be nine characters. So now that one will hold that location, so this one will be zonal from now on when we get that information off of this document. So many ways to process and many ways to get documents off. Again, wildly different layout, similar data, similar form, two completely different companies, and the ability to get that data off. So let me save that, submit. Well, I'm not even going to submit it because there's no reason to. I'm not going to create this full fingerprint. I'm just really going to show you how to get regular expressions and, and to pre-populate the zones for the operator on a page that isn't recognized, page layout that hasn't been recognized yet. So let me just put that batch on hold, come back to the next step, and that is I'm going to fix one last thing on this, and it is that pull down for the fingerprint class. So I have to build a dictionary, so I've locked that. And I'm going to create a new dictionary, and I'm going to call this uh, doctypes. Oh, he's already got one dict add fingerprint. Oh, he's got new fingerprint. And you can use these as samples, too. We're going to have to attach it to our fingerprint class, which we could rename as well if you wanted. I'm going to say add a dictionary, and I'm going to call it page types. Add a word to it. In this case, uh, the word is beneficiary designation. So I'm just going to use the same one for both of them. And I'm going to save that. Now, um, I have to go and attach this to 
the beneficiary designation. Let's just go and just so you see how I do it sometimes. Is I know add new fingerprint has one of these, and wait, the way you get at this is I go to manage variables, and you see they have this variable called DICT, and they've attached it to the dictionary they had created with that yes no in it. So I can do the same thing for the fingerprint class, and I can say manage variables, and I can add a new variable called DICT, and in this one I'm going to call it, what did I call it? Sorry about that. Let me go back and look. Page types. Okay. Right click on that, manage variables. I got this DICT page types. No spaces. Uh, say done. Done. Now I've associated that dictionary with that, and the next time we come through, actually, I could probably just reload this batch in here um, into verify mode, and you could see that my fingerprint class now has a pull down called beneficiary designation. Now, I was typing in bin des, um, but now I can always choose it. And I can pre populate that. If In this case, I'm only going to have, remember, we're going to have in this third part of the video, we're going to build a feeder application. A lot of times it's called a gateway application that's going to split out my different page types and feed my beneficiary designations or my account openings or whatever it is to this specific queue. And so you could probably pre populate it because you know that you're going to be passing those kinds of documents to it as well. That's how you add this pull down and change the value of that of that field. And I think that's it. I'm gonna have one more video and show how to create this feeder application, this gateway application, but thanks for watching this one.